frame that it's in. He, he wants to keep the frame as well. He wants to keep the frame as well. He wants to keep the frame. Bishop to c5. You gotta have a nice frame for the Mona Lisa. <laughs> you yeah. most certainly do. You can't have any looks better at it. I like bishop c5. I yeah. think Wesley's playing for a win here. I think that's what that move signifies to me. Yeah, and it, it also signifies, you know, not just bishop c5, I'm playing for the win because of bishop c5. No, it could be any move. Bishop f8 even. I think he just wants to keep the pieces and, you know, Bishop pair, I always say, Daniel, that's like a long-term investment. Just having it, just holding it is where it actually <laughs> becomes valuable. That's very, very true. I should point out that c4 is always out of the question. Look at that d3 pawn. You cannot afford for that pawn to be taken. And the bishop, yeah. another twist, bishop comes back to g6 because d5 uh -huh. was defended by the knight. And again, Wesley showing just a categorical unwillingness to give his dark squared bishop up, even if it means allowing his other bishop to reach the long diagonal. We also could get some sort of a repetition here, like bishop f7. And I think Hikaru yeah. would be happier. At this moment, At this point, I, yeah. I think that it's it's changed enough that now that rook, Daniel, is in front of the piece. <laughs> we always say that rooks kind of operate best from the back because it's a long-range piece, right? The rook can exert pressure on e8 from e1 or Ooh. e4, and he goes for a sacrifice, and I think that speaks to the fact he was not enjoying his position. As does like his body language. This isn't a sacrifice. Like, yeah, I'm sacrificing in exchange. Right. I'm getting all these squares. The Knights are fully ha capable of handling themselves in this position. I don't think Black is winning, especially given the queenside pawn structure. But now Wesley can breathe a sigh of relief. Yep. He can play this position out for a while. I really don't see a scenario where Wesley gets in any kind of trouble here. So the, the only point I'll make against that is we remember it was almost Hikaru playing for a win. <laughs> Rook an and exchange. Knight. Yeah, against two Rooks in this exact match. And it was oh. Wesley who suddenly had to bail out. So I will say I can absolutely see Hikaru winning this. If this was like a bullet game, and guess what? We're down to a minute each. I, I would say Hikaru is Whoa. definitely playing for a win. You're disagreeing with me. I thought we made a deal. Danny's not in the booth oh, wait, anymore. Danny's I'll give here. you a slide for that. You forgot that we, we kicked Danny, Danny was, out. Yeah, my bad. We forgot. Now, I... Let's go back to our old friend. I still think this bishop belongs in the long diagonal, and so does Wesley So. Yep. Bishop to c8 on the board. He's going to swing his bishop over to b7. What is the point of that? You might look at this and say, well, I don't see any squares on this diagonal worth occupying. It's more that you're restricting the knights. You're stopping knight d5, mm -hmm. and you're keeping your king safe for the long run, which means that black's queen can now swing over to the king side and yep. start attacking the f2 pawn, which is exactly what he does. Wesley's making progress here. He is, and he's playing it really, really well. What was scary to me was a knight getting to e4, Dania. Then it would hit that f6 pawn, hit the c5 pawn. Instead, bishop to b7 covers that, and white's knights are nowhere near the e4 square. Instead, they're on great squares, but they're oh. not able to attack anything. He's also just forced a queen trade. What a move by Wesley. Queen, queen h1, that's right, yeah. He's and got the check. That's another benefit of the bishop on b7. I mentioned yep. there aren't any important squares in the diagonal, and now there are. Queen h1 is basically a pre-move, Yep. And once the queens are traded, then the knights will have a really hard time without that leader, without the queen, to bind them together. Will they be able to handle both sides of the board against Black's bloodthirsty rook. And I think that fact that Black can sort of establish a bishop on f3 means a lot for this position. You might see rook h8, rook to h4, rook d4. You oh. can even jump the gun and do that straight away. And he does. And if he loses that pawn, we might see a Hikaru head shake here because... Oh, man. Can he hold this position together after rook f4 and bishop takes g4? How do you keep this? I actually think it's crucial to start with rook f4, which he does. Look wow. at it precisely. Yeah. Because if he had taken on g4 first, the knight would have jumped out to your square, mm -hmm. cutting off the rook and actually winning the f6 pawn That's back. a great point. Now you're taking on g4, or white's got to trade off one more knight. And we know that when you're up in exchange, every single minor piece trade favors the rook side. That's right. And, you know, it's all about the, the king side pawns here, Daniel. Those queen side fawn, pawns for black, they're going nowhere, right? They're just on the board merely to, you know, satisfy material <laughs> equality or something like that. Because it's all about winning that g pawn, maybe the f pawn, and black. Black creating a pass pawn supported by his rook. Which he now is guaranteed to do. To add insult to injury, if you take the bishop, Black's rook takes back, attacks f2, and if the knight drops back, the rook moves back to f4, yep. and the knight can't guard f2 and g4 at the same time. Hikaru desperately trying to create counter on the queen side, but all he's done is fixed Black's pawns further. That's right, although it was a very interesting move, actually. He was daring Black to take on b4, and then he would cut the rook off, mm -hmm. but instead Wesley stayed focused. He said, look, the most important pawn to win is on the king side, and he's done just that. f5, f5 though, great loses move. another pawn, but then he picks up f Two. He picks up F2. Now he's got a passer on F5. This is on the cusp of being winning. The game not over yet, but he carved down to 10 seconds. And yep. Wesley has kept himself with 40 seconds on the clock to convert this advantage. And it's push time. That's right. He needs a dark square blockade. He needs Ooh. a knight on F2. If he can get the knight on D5 to the F2 square, that's going to be it.
Yeah, he needs to travel all the way back. I like to move Bishop F3 here. That actually forces the trade yep. of Knights, but Wesley goes C6. Obviously, like if, he, move if Hikaru wins this pass, that's the worst case scenario for Wesley. Knight, two Knights and three pawns against Rook, Bishop, and two will be a draw. That's not enough. If the pawns are on the same side. Wow, Rook G1, the patience to play that move. <sighs> he doesn't want to advance that pawn, Daniel, because then the king might get to E3. You have to be very careful. Yep. Don't let white control the dark squares in this position. Yeah, it's not a race. It usually is a race with the pass pawn. Here, you want to push the pawn under the right conditions. Hikaru's going to try to get his king to d4. Again, the point is to meet f3 yep. with king e3. Now, a strategy Wesley could adopt is to shove the rook to b2 at the right moment to distract White's king. That's right. But king c3 right now comes with tempo. Hikaru's holding on. He's doing what Hikaru always does. Yeah. Amazing resilience. Good defense. Another... Oh, oh my goodness. Oh, Wesley five? might have blundered the pawn. Um, Knight back to f3. Yeah, he has rook g4. But he's got bishop g4. Oh, I bishop g4 is bishop even G4. better. But is that resulting position a draw? It is. I think it might be a draw after bishop takes f3. Bishop f3 takes state. Oh, rook f2 is unbelievable. Oh, and now he goes 95 and he's going to win the bishop oh, King back. e3 is going to be temporarily but, down a rook. But Wesley's going to win the b4 pawn. Rook f8 and rook b8 or rook f1 and rook b1. Yep. And I don't know how to evaluate this position. He's going to have a passed a pawn. This has to be winning a month. Yeah, my instincts say this has got to be winning. He's got a pass pawn that the king cannot touch, right? The knight has to bring itself to the b file and act as a shield so the yep. king can walk over. So the king can walk over. It also can... I don't think he's got time to do that. I think he's got to use the knight now to stop the pawn. But how is he going to do that? And he resigns and Wesley wins wow, with the resignation. Black. And I mean, this is probably dead in the water, but, but that was still an early resignation.